Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're going to make this fun card and this is uh, inspired by the current Lawn Fawn Challenge which is to make the sentiment the star of the show. And we're going to be doing a little partial die cutting as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to be starting with a standard A2 size card. So this panel here measures five and a half by eight and a half and I scored it at four and a quarter. And for paper today, I'm using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. And I'm also using for dies the Kohl's ABCs from Lawn Fawn. We're going to be doing some partial die cutting, and I'm going to spell out the word wow, W O W. I'm going to come up, I want to center that O right in the center of my front panel. So I'm coming up two and a quarter inches from the bottom and coming in from the side two and one eighth inches. And that will center that O right in the middle of my card. Now, what you want to do is look for letters or words here that spell the same backwards and forwards. And I could only come up with a few. Wow, mom, and yay are the three that I came up with. So any of those would work here. I thought dad might work, but then I realized that when you open the card, it will the D's will be backwards. I'm taping down these letters with some purple tape. Now I've put it in my Spellbinders Platinum machine and you need a wide enough machine here so that you can turn the card sideways. And what I want to do is just cut part of the letters. Just want to keep the bottom part of the letters attached to my card. So I'm lining up the plate just a little bit above the bottom of the letters and that'll cut the right hand side of my panel. So I'm just cutting from that, uh, that plate towards the right hand side and you'll see that here in a minute. So now when I lift up the tape here, you can see that I've partially die cut those letters, just the tops of the letters. Now because it's W-O-W, -W, I need to grab that W again. I'm going to try to position that. I'm using the T ruler just to make sure I'm on that same straight line. And I'm going to position that, just eyeballing it, about the same distance away from that O as I did before. And then again, I'm going to tape that down with some purple tape. And go back to my die cutting machine. I'm putting this sideways, again, just to make sure it fits into the machine here. I'm using my larger platinum machine. And then I'm going to run that through the machine again. So now you can see that we have all three of our letters partially die cut. And for the center of the O there, it was attached just a little bit. So I just grabbed my scissors. I actually didn't even need to cut this. I just kind of pulled on it a little bit and it popped right out. Now I want to cut away all the excess of the top of the card. So I'm going back to my T ruler and I'm just going to line it up on that pencil mark that we made earlier and I'll just get you a little closer here. So I want to come up just a little bit above that two and a quarter inch mark and I'm going to cut over. So I'll, I'll draw a pencil line here so you can see where I'm going to make the cuts. So anywhere there's not a letter is where I'm cutting. And you can see that there. Then I also want to cut from that score line from the top down to the pencil line. So I'm using my Fiskars cutter to do this and that blade is right in the center of that little cutting uh, piece there. So I'm going to slide that blade right up to the first W. Then I'm going to lift the cutting blade, drop it back down and cut again. I'm just going to follow that pencil line all the way across. Now you could use a ruler and, ex and an X-Acto knife here if you feel more comfortable with that. Either way works fine. I just thought it'd be easier for me to use the, the paper trimmer. I'm just used to doing this, but if you're not, again, grab your uh, X-Acto knife and a cutting mat and you'll get the same results. Just follow your pencil line. And then here I just want to cut from that pencil line right up to the top of the card. I'm following along the score line of the card. 
So now you can see that that top panel is going to pop off, except I've got to get these little tiny pieces out from the W's here. I didn't want to use the cutter for that. I just wasn't exactly sure my blade was going to be in the exact place I needed it to be. So if it's attached in any little places after that, just use your X-Acto and pop that right out. So you can see we've cut out that top panel there. Now for coloring, I'm going to go ahead and grab my purple tape and I'm going to tape this down. I want to block off the back of the card and I'm going to do some stenciling with the grassy stencil from Lawn Fawn. The first thing I want to do is apply the Mowed Lawn Distress Oxide Ink all over the front of this panel. And don't worry about the letters. We're going to be covering those later, so don't worry about going over those. Now I'm placing my stencil down, and I'm going to add a little bit more ink here just to create the illusion of grass here at the bottom of this panel. I'm just inking up my foam applicator and just applying a little bit of ink here, again, just to create that illusion of grass. Now I'm going to remove that purple tape and then I'm going to just clean off my glass mat here. I do want to keep the card clean since we are uh, doing all of our work directly on the card. I want to make sure everything's clean here. So now I'm going to create that grassy border down at the bottom of my panel as well. So I'm going to mask that off. And I'm just using my glass mat here just to make sure everything's lined up nice and straight. And I'm just going to mask this off. And it also will hold my card in place while I do my stenciling. So again, I'm going to apply Mowed Lawn ink all over the bottom of this panel first. Then I'm coming in with my stencil and I'm going to do the same thing. Now here I will have to move the stencil over a little bit just to get that left hand side. So I'm just going to slide it over and continue that inking. So once we have that all set, I'm just going to use that leftover ink on my applicator and just blend that out just a little bit. Now again, I can remove my purple tape, clean off my glass mat. You do want to make sure you dry this because we are going to be masking off this bottom section and your purple tape won't stick if the ink is still wet here. So what I want to do is line up my purple tape, leaving a little tiny bit of that green showing. Just a hair, just a little tiny bit. Just so that we don't have a white gap in between the top and the bottom of the panel when we do our coloring. So I'm going to make sure I tape everything down. And using the cloudy stencil from Lawn Fawn, I'm going to do the sky. I'm using the Speckled Egg Distress Ink. This is not the, the oxide ink. This is the regular Distress Ink. I'm again using my foam applicator tool. And I'm going to start on the stencil and just push that ink up onto my paper. And this way you can blot off a little bit of ink on your stencil first. And then push that excess ink onto your cardstock. And if you need more, you can always just brush a little bit more on there. And you do want some lighter and darker areas to make your clouds look a little bit more realistic. So the nice thing, this stencil has four different sides. So just keep turning it and kind of get a variety of cloud patterns here. And I'm going to do that all the way down to that purple tape. So now I can again remove the purple tape here and now we have the grassy border and the beautiful sky. Now for stamps today I'm going to be using this cute little 
a bug deal stamp set from Lawn Fawn. And these little bugs are just adorable. And we're going to be using a couple of sentiments here as well. So again, this is called a bug deal and it has the coordinating dies as well. I'm going to grab that sentiment that says this is a really bug deal. So it'll say, wow, this is a really bug deal. And I'm using my VersaFine Onyx Black ink to do my stamping here. So I've placed it in my Misty Stamp Positioner just to make sure that I get a nice crisp stamping here. And I'm just going to lightly press on that. Now I also want to grab the word congrats for the inside of the card and that little exclamation point as well. So I'm going to flip the card over here. I haven't folded the card yet because I want to keep everything flat while I'm doing all of this uh, prep work here. So I'm going to place the congrats. I moved it around quite a few times. I thought I would have it under the wow. But then in the end, I decided to put it right here in the center on the right hand side. But any of those little areas would be just fine. So play around with that a little bit. Again, I've inked that up and I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. Now, I also want to grab the, the little apples here and the basket of apples from the Thanks a Bushel stamp and die set. So I've gone ahead and stamped all my little elements from those two sets. And for my coloring, I'm using mid-brown and oatmeal. And I'm using the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens to do my coloring. I'm going to always, as always, start with my lightest color first, adding my darker shades sort of down along the bottom of this branch. And then I'm going to pull that up towards the top here. Now you could also use a water brush here to do your blending, but I'm using the blender pen from Zig. And you want to scribble it off on your scrap paper to change colors. And when it goes clear, you know that it's clean. And for the next one, I'm using the deep green, the may green, and the yellow. And for my leaves, sometimes just to add a little pop of color, I start with the yellow on the tips of the leaves. Then I'm adding a little bit of the light green, then the darker green, and then I'm going to pull those colors together. And I'm just going to pull those colors into that yellow. And that's going to give me a little bit of a brighter tone on the tips of the leaves. You can also use the yellow around the edges of the leaves as well. Sometimes that gives you a really fun look. So I'm just going to continue blending those out and I'm going to do that same thing for all of the leaves. I'm coming back in with a little bit more of that yellow. Again, just adding that little highlight there at the tips of the leaves. Now with wine red, I'm going to color in my little ladybug and I'm just simply adding the red down at the bottom and pulling up towards the top. And with Persian green, I'm going to do the same thing with this little bug here. Now with dark pink and sugared almond pink, I'm going to do my little butterfly starting with that light pink and then just adding a little tiny bit of that dark pink right along the uh, center and pulling it out towards the edges. And then for the middle of the butterfly, I'm using the blue gray. I'm placing a little underneath the chin there and then pulling it down and then doing the head and pulling it up towards the top. Now with light violet and English lavender, I'm gonna do the little dragonfly. And I'm using that same technique. And off camera, I'm coloring in that second set of bugs. So I stamped two sets of these bugs. I didn't end up using all of them, but I did color a bunch of them in. I didn't know how many I would need. Now for the little grasshopper, I'm using the turquoise green. And I'm using a gray-brown to do the little worms.
So those are all set. Now I can do my little apples. I'm going to be using yellow, orange, and scarlet red. Now I did start with the scarlet red along the edges here, but you'll see later I'm going to add a little bit more color to that. Then the orange and then the yellow right down the center. So I'm not being fussy. I'm just adding stripes of color. And here's where I brought in the wine red just to darken up those edges a little bit. So the wine red right along those outer edges. And then I'm simply going to pull in towards the center. So I'm just grabbing that color from the edges and pulling it in. And if you get a little too much color, you want to scribble that off before you go to the center here because you want to keep that center the lightest. That's going to give you a nice highlight down the center of these apples. Now for the basket, I'm going back to those two browns, the oatmeal and the mid-brown. And I'm just going to do a little bit of shading here on the basket, pulling everything in towards the center here. And then I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow along that band and then along the bottom of the basket as well. And I'm going to pull that up towards the top. And again, I colored a lot more apples than I needed, and I have one with the little bite taken out of it. All the rest are the same. So I'm grabbing the coordinating dies. I'm going to tape those down with some purple tape, and I'm running everything through my Sizzix Sidekick machine. So once I die cut everything, you can see all my little pieces here. We've got doubles of all the little critters, a ton of apples and leaves, and that branch, and that little basket of apples as well. So now I'm going back to my Kohl's ABC alphabet, and I'm going to cut out W-O-W -W twice. So I want two sets of these. And what I'm going to do here is I, I did die cut them from 100 pound black cardstock, and I'm going to glue these on the front and the back of this panel. So now I'm going to have a nice thick, um, I'm going to have nice thick letters here. So you don't have to worry about this collapsing as it opens and closes. It's not going to be flimsy at all. It's actually going to be nice and thick. So you'll have the white cardstock in the center and the black letters on the front and back of each of these. So this is going to give us a really nice pop of the wow right here in the center of our card. So again, we're trying to make the sentiment the star of the show here. So I'm using my uh, glue tube from Lawn Fawn to do all my gluing here. And once those are all lined up, and you do want to take a minute or two here just to make sure you position those down nice and straight. And then I'm going to open the card up and I'm going to do the same thing on the inside. And you can see how cute that's going to be. So now I also realized that the little ladybug was very symmetrical and I had cut out and colored two of those. So I'm going to apply a little bit of glue here to the bottom of this first ladybug. And then I'm going to apply glue to the top on the back side and to the bottom on this, the one that's going on the inside of the card. And I'm going to glue those two together. And you can see there that because it's exactly symmetrical, that's going to look really cute. So I'm going to have the ladybug looking uh, forward on both sides of my card. Now, just a comment here. You could have done that with the letters as well, but I wanted to make sure the letters were nice and thick and really stood out. So that's an option for you as well. Now, I've taken the branch and I've added a little bit of foam mounting tape here to the branch. And then I'm going to add my leaves. I've popped up the branch, so I want to pop up the leaf. I'm just placing a little bit of foam tape on the tips of the leaves. And then I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive on the base of the leaf, just so they'll lay nice and flat against that branch. You do want to make sure that they don't get in the way of your letters there. So keep your card closed while you're doing this so you can make sure you have everything positioned properly. Now I'm going to grab the little apples and I'm going to place three little apples up here. 
and I placed some foam tape on them. And on this one, I'm just going to lay this flat right on top of those branches. And I just didn't, that one I didn't think was colored as well as this one. So I just replaced it. Now for the little basket, I'm also going to pop that up. And then I'm going to grab the little worm and I'm attaching him to the apple that has the bite out of it. And then I'm going to pop this up as well. Now this other little bug here, I want him to look like he's carrying that apple into onto the inside of the card. So you'll see him repeated again on the inside of the card. So he's got the little apple there. And then I'm going to um, finish attaching the front of the card here. So I want to add, add the butterfly and the dragonfly. And I'm just simply going to glue those down. So you want some items popped up and some not, just so it looks like some are further away than others. And then I'm going to add my little grasshoppers here to the top, up on this branch. So now when I open the card, I want to make it look like that little bug there came from the front side onto the inside of the card carrying his little apple. And then I wanted to add a leaf down here at the bottom. And I'm just trying to decide here what I want to do, which little bug that I want to add here. I did decide to go with the little worm, but any of them would be cute here. I did end up adding another little apple on the inside of the card later on. Now I'm using the Aqua Shimmer Glitter Gloss Pen from Nuvo and I'm going to add glitter to all of the critters. And then I'm taking my Uniball Signo White Gel Pen and I'm going to add my highlights. And this is really going to make the card pop a lot. It just adds a lot of interest to your card. And I also want to add these highlights to my letters. So I went over these twice with the gel pen just to make sure it was a nice bright white. And I want to do the same thing on the letters on the inside as well. You can see there that I added that other little apple off to the right hand side on the inside of the card. So now when I open and close my card, you can see that the wow shows up from either direction. And let me give you a closer look at everything else here. You could also add some little polka dots to those letters as well. That would be really cute or some glitter. So whatever you want to do there just to make them stand out a little bit more. So this is the card for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. As always, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.